let's start from the very beginning. Why did we launch Google Analytics Premium and why is there an enterprise solution for analytics? We've had the free version of GA going on ever since we bought Urchin, so about 10 years ago. And it's become the most widely used web analytics tool worldwide. And some people say it's because it's scalable, it's easy to use, it's easy to integrate with other tools, and I hope you relate to that. Partly, I think, it's also because it's free. That really invites people to set it up, and you know, we never complain when things are free. And, and that's what makes it, made it become so popular. But the profile of people using the free version of GA has varied immensely, and it's people ranging customers like yourself, so some of Google's largest advertisers and partners, but also individual blog writers like my dad. Because it's free, that's the scope that it, it ranges, really. And when we looked at the market landscape, the analytics market landscape three years ago, Google spoke to its, some of its biggest partners. I, I hope we spoke to you, some of you at least. And we, and we asked, like, what is your analytics setup and what tools are you using to track data and see how visitors are coming in and out of your website? And our, our clients told us, actually, we've, we've always got an enterprise tool, so tools like IBM or Adobe or Web Trends, but we've always got the free version of GA on the side. And we've got the enterprise tool because we need that reliability and security and a contract, but actually, everyone is really happy with Google's user friendliness. And that was a scenario in several customers. And I don't know if you relate to that, uh, but that was really the, the reality we found three years ago. And so Google thought, okay, why don't we launch an enterprise solution maintaining the good things of the free version? So into easy integration with other tools, user friendliness, scalability, and also if you switch from free to premium, your historical data is there. And that's exactly what we did. We started with a pilot program in UK, US, and Canada. Things went well. We're now offering the product globally, and we've got 350 plus customers. So things are growing very quickly. And th to describe what we did to make it enterprise friendly, it's three main areas. So on the first hand, we put a contract in place. That's the least sexy part of it all. Like we just put SLAs in contracts and made it secure. The second bit was ensuring there's support available to you. So there's no team within Google providing support for the free version of GA. That was a huge area of frustration for everyone, anyone dealing with the free version of GA. So we said, let's make it robust and let's make it a unique selling point. And thirdly, the enhanced processing power. So make it enterprise, reliable, and robust. And Reese will work more on that. So firstly, providing the contract. This was like just ticking off what our advertisers said, was, impor said were, was important to them. So they wanted to know where data was held, where data was stored, who was accessing their, their account, and who owns the data. Whereas in the free version, it's an online click and accept. With premium, there's a contract committing Google to you with financial implications if we don't deliver. So data is always owned by the customer. This is something that always comes up in discussions. It's always owned by you, whether it's free or premium. But with premium, there's a contract that says this, and there's no gray areas around data. We really can't play around with this. We've got all eyes on us. And so if any of you were to become a premium customer tomorrow, I couldn't go into the account. So only people with written access can go into your account. You're an enterprise customer, therefore your data goes through a different processing pipeline. Also, in terms of SLAs, we had to commit to what our customers wanted, SLAs on reporting, collection, and processing of data. An example is the data freshness. So within four hours, data has to be fresh on the interface. And if it's not, we financially reimburse you for that month. And this is really our stretched SLA. That's what, what's on the contract. We always work towards lower limits. So 47 minutes is actually how, how fast data is fresh in the interface, even though the SLA says four hours. In terms of support, uh, the, I think the biggest advantage of having been the new kid on the block, so having launched relatively recently, three years ago, is that we were able to ask our customers and say, what do you want? If, you were to, if we were to launch an enterprise solution now, what would you want it to include? And their main ask was, make it all inclusive of support. The biggest pain point for us right now, they would say, is, oh, you've spent an additional hour on the phone with your account manager, here's an additional invoice. Or you've submitted another technical request, your yearly fee for analytics is not 20,000, it's 30,000. And, and that's really a deal breaker for everyone who's on the customer's side. It's really, 
It doesn't let you focus on what's important for your business needs and delegate support to Google. And that's what we wanted to position ourselves like. And so the first thing is that we made it all inclusive. We said no tiered module for support. The first thing that happens if you were to become a premium customer is what we call a kickoff meeting or a stakeholder day. And we, we just had one this morning. And that meeting typically lasts three, four, five hours, however long we need. And it's when we discuss your requirements. So you tell us, this is our business model. This is where the user interacts with our brand. This is where we want to track. And these are the different moments we want to, to be with the user. And then we translate that into analytics language. So we provide you with an implementation guide and say, based on what you told us, these are our recommendations to you. And that's provided by an implementation specialist who is assigned to each premium customer. After that kickoff meeting, you also have a dedicated account manager. So if you have interaction with other Google products, it's a very similar relationship. Your main point of contact for anything analytics related you can contact this person every day, every week, every month. We really want you to have a close relationship and for you to see this person as an extension of your marketing team. Then there's technical support for purely technical uh, questions. And lastly, there's training. So the worst thing that could happen would be, have a, uh, would be to have a premium customer become premium and one year later call us and say, actually, we signed for premium, no one's using the tool, we're going to switch it off. And we're like, okay, we didn't do our job well. That one year's revenue was nothing because on, in the long run, you're, you're not loyal to us, with the product didn't convince you. So we provide training for fundamentals analytics, advanced analytics, and every time we launch a new feature. So it's not only for the beginning, for example, right now we're migrating to a new tracking code, so all our premium customers get training on that. And we did it in a scalable way, which is through broadcasted webinars, which is online so that everyone can access through their laptops. And lastly, we wanted to make the product itself more robust. So all of the limitations and the restrictions on the free version, if you've come across them, such as sampling or five custom variables, and actually product restrictions that you have there, those have been stretched for premium. So not only in terms of collecting the data, but how much data is available to you, how much data you can export, how much data you can use. We've stretched them all. Our ideal is that you wouldn't even think of them. So you're, you're doing your analysis and you don't have to think, do I have 10 custom variables left or two? Like we really don't want you to reach them. But we have to input some limits because or else it would be free for all. Uh, and so that's what we did. So for example, custom variables, you have five in the free version times 10 for premium. And everything was stretched in that way. Not only did we stretch the limits, we also created premium only features. So, pre uh, so some features are too costly to process for all of the free accounts that exist in the world. There are, I think, 60 million GA free accounts in the world. And some premium features, such as integrations with other tools or data-driven attribution modeling, they're too expensive to process. So those are exclusively for our premium customers. An example of that is if you're using other products, such as DoubleClick, used to be DFA and now is DCM, you can pull in data through to GA Premium. So you can have your impression level data incorporated into your attribution models. And this was a key request from, from our advertisers who wanted to see AdWords data side by side with double click data, side by side with YouTube, and not have it scattered within different interfaces and different tools. And so slowly and slowly we're working towards our vision, which is having this, well, having GA Premium be, become the one-stop shop for all. Ideally you'd have all your marketing efforts, whether they're inside Google and Google's products, or outside Google. Facebook, Bing, and whichever other ones you may use, wish to use. And they're all in the same interface so that you don't have to be matching different data sets together. I, I, I'm sure you relate to it, having several different interfaces for several different data sets and how do you merge the marketing channels together and even making TV data become YouTube through transferring GRPs and that's all really complex. And our overall vision is really to have one interface in which everything talks to each other and when you go to meetings, people have the same source of truth and are talking the same KPIs and not having, oh, I did this report on my IBM but it's implemented and I did this one on the free version or this one on that. So that's really our aim for you to use analytics. One of the, the best feedbacks we get from our premium customers is really the 
the speed of development at which GA Premium uh, moves. We move very quickly. So I joined the team two years ago. And since then, the amount of launches and features and product releases that have happened have been numerous. So we also try to keep up with development as much as we provide training for it. And every week, there's an email from the product manager saying, this is the most recent update here. This is what's new here. And we really have to keep up with that. And premium um, customers have priority access to all beta features, which are related to Google Analytics. So whether it's free or premium, our premium customers have first say on the new feature that's about to be released. And it's also them who tell us, actually, this is working, or this isn't, or I'd really like to see this, or not see this anymore. And we incorporate that feedback and develop the, the, um, the product accordingly. And that's actually a good segue to introduce Reese, who will talk about the integration with BigQuery. Thanks, Sophia. So um, I said at the beginning, my name is Reese. I work here in London as a solutions consultant for analytics. And um, I'm here to introduce the integration we have between Google Analytics Premium and BigQuery. As Sophia said, we, we love getting feedback from our Analytics Premium clients. We, uh, you know, they really are the, the power users of analytics, taking full advantage of all the features. And our product managers are, are really, really receptive to hearing their feedback and to helping that to shape the product roadmaps and features that are going to be prioritized and rolled out. An example of the sort of feature request we received was from eBay, one of our premium clients, who spoke publicly um, at our I.O. conference last year about this, this integration. Um, and eBay were making heavy use of Analytics Premium to, to analyze their web traffic. Uh, like Sophia said, the accessibility and ease of use of analytics means that for large organizations like eBay, it's a great tool to use cross-functionally so that marketers SEO specialists and data scientists can all begin to use it and, and get insights. The thing is that organizations like eBay have multiple data sets. They have huge amounts of data. It lives in different places. So in eBay's case, they might have website data, uh, CRM data, and marketing data, which is all brought together in vast data warehousing. And then separate to that, they have external data sources, so Google Analytics, um, AdSense, these online sources and things that live outside of the data warehouse, which what they really need is to be able to see all that stuff in one place, analyze it together. So what, what eBay really needed was a place where they could bring together all their data from all their different sources and to work on these disparate sets of data to turn them into insights. For example, to take some information which might be stored in a CRM system in one part of the organization and analyze it alongside web traffic measured by Google Analytics and to perhaps visualize that in a Tableau dashboard, which is uh, accessible on an organizational level. The solution that our product managers came up with um, as a result of this request was to leverage BigQuery as Google's big data and query engine to provide more granular access to Google Analytics data than, than ever before. And this integration really allows data scientists to get their hands on the raw data pr generated by analytics to start generating much deeper insights than previously would have been possible. So what do we actually get with the integration? In BigQuery, you'll get a table which contains the Google Analytics dimensions and metrics that you use to report on that any users of the Analytics API certainly would already be familiar with. And even users of the reporting interface will be familiar with all of the dimension and metric names. Once the integration's in place, we process a nightly export of all of the Google Analytics session data out into BigQuery tables. And the way that that data will actually look once you get it, we'll see it later, but the way that data looks once you get it is that you have one row per Google Analytics session or visit that you would probably be familiar with. And you'd see the sorts of information that is normally associated with sessions, and traffic source or, or browser, for example. But one of the real powerful features of this integration is that within each row, which represents a visit to your site, you'll get a nested set of all of the hit-level data 
that actually went into building that visit. So that's a sequenced set of hits that actually went into constructing that visit. So every page view that happened, every event, every transaction, and associated with those hits, all of the customized information that you might have sent through, custom variables and dimensions. And previously, it, it really wouldn't have been possible to access those hits in such a direct way. And the access to those, that, that, that hit level data really unlocks a whole new set of reporting. So where previously in Google Analytics, you might have had to do something which was either time consuming or, or even impossible in some cases in the interface and involve perhaps building multiple segments out, you can simply write a query in BigQuery specifying your criteria and construct the hits in a way that makes sense. The other advantage to this format of having Google Analytics data freely accessible and queryable in BigQuery with an SQL-like um, language is the fact that you can actually bring together other sets of data really easily. So address problems that big organizations like eBay faced where they had multiple data sets, they want to put them in one place and query them all together. BigQuery makes that incredibly easy. And finally, as you can see, BigQuery, it's, it's really Google's solution to tackling big data. So Google Analytics Premium. Some of our clients will be sending, exporting to BigQuery, tens of millions of rows of analytics data. And they may well be joining that with CRM data of equal or even greater proportions. And as you've seen in, in some of the demos and, and heard in some of the talks today, you know, BigQuery can join that data together and, and return results in literally in seconds. Um, I, I don't think we had any analytics premium users in the room, but if anyone is familiar, generating uh, an unsampled report in analytics premium can sometimes take minutes or, or even at, at, uh, at the most hours, um, depending on the complexity of the report. You've seen from BigQuery that data is generally returned in, in seconds. Traditionally, in, in Google Analytics, the, the way that it works is that all the hits that you send through from your site are aggregated or processed by Google Analytics. And, and that aggregation is part of what makes Google Analytics so easy to use and makes the interface so accessible to people. So the processing that goes into all the data that's actually sent through from your site to Analytics allows the application of advanced segments, the building of custom reports, the uh, use of attribution models. That's all thanks to the processing that, that analytics does on the, on the data. But for our premium clients, what we were finding was that even though they have access to these, this process data and are able to download unsampled reports on the process data, sometimes, again, they were pushing the limits about what was possible through that reporting interface and using that aggregated data that has kind of already been constructed by Google Analytics processing. So with the BigQuery integration, what we allow is for data scientists to actually see the hits and see everything that went towards making that visit to allow you really granular, really flexible access to unprocessed raw data that obviously is also unsampled. And what that means is that data scientists can use these hits as the building blocks to construct their own bits of analysis, so to, to write queries which put the hits together in a way that makes sense for the type of questions that your business is, is actually asking and the types of issues, challenges that you're facing. And in some cases, you know, particularly as said with our, our power users, our premium users, there were cases where the aggregated data in the interface didn't necessarily fit in exactly with the questions being asked. And BigQuery really just completely unlocks those types of challenges. So what types of ways might we actually put the data back together. Why, how might we use this, this hit data? And um, behind me, you can see a couple of, uh, just a couple of use cases um, about how, how someone might use the hit data provided by uh, Google Analytics into BigQuery to, to answer business questions. Um, we'll take one example, how, how voucher codes might be used. Say you're an e-commerce retailer and you issue voucher codes. You might use Google Analytics or, or BigQuery even to uh, run a simple report to answer a simple question. How many uh, users came to my site from a referrer, a voucher code referrer? You know, how many people came to my site via that channel? And that might allow you some understanding of what's going on. But really, there's a plethora of ways that people actually are behaving online. And to really unlock them, we need to get deeper into the data. So we might ask a question. 
how many users come to the site, they don't have a voucher code, and they, they look around, they think of buying something, and they, they get as far as the checkout, and they see that the voucher code box, they don't, they don't have a voucher code, and they think, oh, I could probably get one. And what they do is they leave the site, they hunt around for a voucher code, and they come back, say, 10 minutes later with a voucher code, and they complete their, their transaction. Uh, previously, I've not had a lot of visibility into that type of behavior, particularly if people are coming directly back to your site to use that voucher code. Using BigQuery, you could really easily write a query which looks at the kind of unique visitor IDs, checks out the sequence of hits leading up to checkouts, see how many didn't transact but then came back within a certain set of minutes with a voucher code and actually completed their transaction. Additionally, you get another level of understanding on that data. Let's say you upload some metadata into BigQuery about the voucher codes themselves. As long as that voucher code is captured by analytics, you can then join it up using BigQuery to another table and really understand the nature of the vouchers that were used. Where were they issued? What were they worth? Who, who used them? You know, all this sort of information, actually join it together and get a complete picture of, of the behavior, which that type of analysis might previously have been quite difficult using the analytics interface alone. So those are the kind of use cases. Um, let's switch out to see what this actually looks like in the BigQuery interface. So what we have here is a BigQuery project. And um, we're looking at a, at a fictional uh, business called the London, London Cycle Helmet. And uh, London Cycle Helmet, they've started exporting their Google Analytics data. You can see it here. It's what it would look like, the sessions table on the left. That's one day's worth of analytics data that's been exported for London Cycle Helmet. And you can see they've also got started here on uploading some, some CRM data. Um, so they've made a good start on the integration. And as you can see, we've, 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 we've opened up the, the schema for that Google Analytics data. And if we scroll down, you can see a lot of, you know, anyone who uses GA will recognize a lot of this terminology. Um, and you can see here one thing you know, that's really valuable about the BigQuery is all this hits information that was sent through. So what we can do is we can, we can query that table. And we can write a very straightforward query just to show us what analytics data actually looks like in BigQuery. We can just select everything. And if we run that, we'll see that results are returned almost immediately. Um, and this will be the first time that you're really seeing data in the BigQuery, interf um, seeing analytics data in this way. This will be the first time you have real hands-on access to hits. But in reality, you're probably not going to be running select all statements on your Google Analytics data. Um, you're going to want to do something a little bit more valuable. Can we switch back out for a sec? Um, so what you're probably going to want to see, actually, is something which gives you a bit more meaning. So we have a, a query just here. And that's, this, this query is fairly straightforward. It's just going to show us the number of visits by traffic source browser and OS combinations. And already, though, you can start to see some of the power of BigQuery here. Because anyone familiar with analytics might know that actually um, you are limited to an extent in the amount of dimensions that you can see side by side in the interface or in the API. And using BigQuery, here we have three dimensions, traffic source, browser, and OS. But thanks to the fact that this data is completely unsampled and completely queryable using this SQL-like language in BigQuery, you can actually see as many dimensions side by side as you want to. So it's super powerful for that. So we'll, just, we'll quickly run this in the, in the demo. Um, and watch it return some results, if we could switch out. So here it is, the query itself. We'll run it, and again, you know, within seconds, we've got data coming back. And if we switch back out for a moment, you know, these queries are really easy to build on as well. We have data coming back about that traffic source information, browser OS traffic source. We saw the visits were returned for each combination almost instantly, really, really quick. Say we want to build on it by having a look at that data and getting a bit more insight and saying, well, how, how many visitors to those sources did we have who actually performed a transaction? So not a null transaction value there. And if we switch out to the demo, we can check out the new results um, 
and again, you see, you know, within seconds. And, and really, this, this London cycle helmet data, you know, it's a small data set. It's one table of GA data. It's a relatively small set of visits. But, you know, I've seen cases where clients use literally tens of millions of rows. They perform, you know, queries much like this. Um, they're all completely unsampled, and the, ret the results are returned in, you know, in seconds, tens of millions of rows. As you can see, it's really, really flexible. You know, it's completely direct access to the data using this SQL-like language. But if we switch back to the slides, uh, the real power of BigQuery comes in the ability to join together tables of data. And I'm sure this is something which you're most excited uh, about seeing. That, you know, this, is, this is something that the users who are, who are taking advantage of BigQuery already are, are really you know, leveraging to great effect. And what London Cycle Helmet here are doing is joining up their CRM data with the information measured by Google Analytics. So London Cycle Helmet have captured the education level amongst their clients. And they store that in their CRM data. It's not something which is in Google Analytics for them. And what they want to do is understand, by education level, where the most transactions are coming from. So they can understand where to allocate their marketing or whether the allocations they've made have been effective where there's scope for optimization. Let's switch out and run this. So same query that I just showed you, we'll run it. And almost immediately again, we've joined analytics data to CRM data. And London Cycle Climate can immediately get an extra layer of understanding that wouldn't have been possible just purely looking at analytics data and would have been perhaps arduous for them to get otherwise. And they can quickly see that high school education level is their highest uh, tra transactors, and then PhDs, not at all. And uh, that can help them to really, you know, really help to leverage their, their marketing spend a bit better. So those really are just you know, a couple of examples of the ways that uh, BigQuery can actually be applied in, in real life. Um, you know, these, these fairly simple examples, obviously, we can get far more complex. If you know, you're already a Google Analytics Premium customer, you can uh, already start to take advantage of this integration just by contacting your account manager. We've, um, we want to keep it as cost neutral as possible for our premium clients. So we actually offer a, a $500 uh, credit towards a BigQuery project for our premium customers to start really doing this sort of thing right away and getting to grips with it and running queries and getting better insights. If you're not a Google Analytics Premium customer already, um, but you want to know more about this or, or about premium as a whole, obviously, you can feel free to contact us and we'll, we'll be happy to, to talk more about it. Um, I'd just like to finish by saying, you know, this is an integration which we're really, really excited about. It's been, you know, a feature request which we've had multiple times, the access to raw log level, raw hit level data, um, something which we're really excited to be able to offer and has unlocked a lot more potential in the data that's available to analytics customers. And we're really excited about helping premium customers and seeing what insights and what new things that they're doing with the data uh, now that this integration is available. Um, so thanks so much for, for listening area today. Um, I hope you enjoyed the presentation and, um, and the rest of the afternoon. <laughs>